Hello my lovelies, I hope you're all well. In this Amigurumi tutorial I will show you how to crochet this little cat. <laughs> I already have a sitting cat tutorial. If you haven't tried that one yet, I'll link to it up there in case you're interested. But if you want to try this standing cat, then stick with this video. We'll get started right now. Just a little disclaimer, like um, many of my patterns, this is not meant for small children to be played with, especially with the glue on the whiskers and um, the safety eyes that um, aren't really safe for children under three. So yeah, this is definitely um, a decoration or for adults or um, you can give it to older children to play um, who you know don't, don't take it in the mouth or anything like that. For this little project we need yarn and DK or light worsted weight. This is paint box yarns cotton DK in stormy grey and champagne white. If you're interested in using the same yarn I have a links to this below in the description box. But of course you could use any yarn you like and any colors you like. Um, just choosing gray and, and like an off-white for this little cat. Then we need embroidery floss. And I'm going for a light pink one for the little nose. And we need a 2.5 millimeter hook which is something in between a size B1 and C2. So if you tend to crochet very tightly, I recommend going for a C2, but um, if your stitches are quite loose, I would go for a B1. And then we need fiber fill, a yarn needle, and a sewing needle. And this one should be, should have a large enough large enough eye to thread the embroidery floss on it. Then we have safety eyes, but you could also embroider the eyes with black embroidery floss if you prefer. These safety eyes are five millimeters in diameter. Then we need a stitch marker and pins. It's up to you but you may like to use pins to pin the body parts in position when assembling our amigurumi and scissors of course. If you want to attach whiskers to your cat you need some type of thread for them depending on which you want to use. I use this metallic sewing thread that I found worked well. I just took um two threads into one, like I just um, layered, and I used two layers of it. But embroidery floss in white or any color you see fit would also work. And then we need some glue. I don't think it has to be super glue. I just happened to have super glue and that was the only option I had to hand. So, any liquid glue should work and then we also need a rubber glove to apply the glue to the whiskers once they are attached and that's just to firm them up so that they don't droop down. We begin with the little legs and I want to give my cat white socks so I'm starting with the with the white yarn and I leave the I'm, I'm going to start with a magic ring but just make sure you leave the yarn and longer than you normally would maybe 15 centimeters maybe six inches will already be enough I believe yeah this should be enough then we make a magic ring so just use your preferred magic ring method 
And then we start with eight single crochet in the magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we close the magic ring, but I don't close it completely. I'll do that after crocheting the next round. Also, another thing that we need to keep in mind, this yarn end should be on the outside. So I'll just go through the center of the magic ring here with my hook and pull it outside. So that's where we'll need it later. Now in round two, we crochet in the back loops only. And we start with two single crochet. So one in each of the first two back loops. Now we decrease, but only in the back loops. So um, you can easily do this by first just going under the first back loop, that's easy. And then to get your hook under the second back loop, sometimes it can be a bit tricky. So you can hook, get your hook in between the front and back loop of the next stitch and then just turn your hook 180 degrees like this and then you'll be you'll get under the second back loop easily then we pick up the yarn pull it through both these back loops now the first one is easy and the second one we may need to twist our hook a bit to get it through and then just complete the single crochet and that's our first decrease done then two more single crochet, one in each of the next two back loops. And one more decrease in the back loops. So go under back loop one, hook in under back loop two, turn the whole hook pick up the yarn, pull it through back loop one and twist it to get it through back loop two. Not sure if you saw that, so I'll just repeat that again. Because <laughs> every time I do this, I move my arms. <laughs> That's it. And complete the single crochet. So that's round two done, and now we can fully close the magic ring here. In round three, we actually need to prepare our gray yarn, or whichever color you, you're using for the little cat. So for the color change, I prepare just by making a little loop with a slip knot in the new color that I wanna join. Just leave that there for now. But first, we single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And now in the last stitch of the round, we change it to gray. So we insert our hook in the last stitch, pick up the yarn in white, and then pop the loop in the new color on our hook and put it through these two loops. This yarn and we just hold in place with our middle finger there. And now we can start round four in the new color. So for round four, we single crochet in the first two stitches. 
getting the yarn ends there out of the way. One and two. And then we increase in the third stitch. One and two. And then we repeat this series of stitches once more. So one, oops, and two and increase. So now around his eight stitches. By the way, we can now break the white yarn here. So this yarn, it doesn't need to be particularly long, just cut it off. So now in round five, we start with two single crochet again. One and two. And now we decrease. Now this time it's just regular invisible decreases that we use for uh, Amigurumi projects. So if you haven't done this before, I have a little tutorial that I can link to up there. Um, but yeah, this, this decrease is in the front loops only. So we insert our hook in the next two front loops and single crochet. And now we repeat this once more, two single crochet, one and two and another decrease. That's it. And now round six, we just single crochet in all six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And that's the first leg done. So here we can fasten off. Here again, the yarn, it doesn't need to be extra long, we can just cut it off here. And that's the first leg almost done. We still have something to do with this long yarn end, but we'll do that later. First we can get have all the crochet all the legs. So this is a four leg by the way. So you can go back to whichever minute I'm gonna put here and I'll also put put a clickable timestamp in the description box below so that you can go back to the beginning and make the second four leg. Once you've done that you can crochet the hind legs by crocheting only round one to five of the four legs. Round six is a little bit different. So next I'm going to show you how we finish the hind legs in round six. So in round six of the hind legs we start with two single crochet and then we increase. In the third stitch and repeat once more two single crochet one and two and increase in the last stitch so that we finish with a round of eight 
And here we can fasten off. Again, we don't need an extra long yarn in here. So, these two yarn ends, we can, if possible, using your hook or little scissors, you can hide them inside the leg. That just makes it more stable. And also, you won't have to deal with them <laughs> for the next step. It will get a little bit messy if we have all the yarn ends peeking out there. So I'll just use them as a very light stuffing for the legs. Yeah, so I try to push them in and distribute them evenly so they're not just all stuck in one place and deform the legs in a funny way. But no, that's looking good. So now all that's left to do for the legs is we just make the pause a little more flat here using this longer yarn end so we'll need our yarn needle oops wrong needle that's the one and then you just find which side looks more like the front so for me that's definitely this side and there you just stitch through three different spots between round two and three And you stitch through the center of the magic ring of round one. And this way you also div divide the paw into little toe sections. I'm not sure what the actual term is for this. <laughs> and at the same time the paw gets flattened a bit so looks more paw-like. So once you've done like three stitches should be enough. You can just pull the yarn and tight and then weave it in trying to follow the flow of the stitches. And once that's woven in enough, you can just cut the yarn and short. And that's the legs done. So we just need to repeat this with the other three legs and then we can move on with the body. So next we'll crochet the belly. And I'm choosing white for the belly, so we start with a chain of four actually we can leave the yarn end a bit longer here because later we'll join the legs and then there will be a few gaps between the legs and there's also usually a little gap in the middle of the belly. So I'm leaving the yarn end a little bit longer so that we can use it to close those gaps later on. So then we chain four and we single crochet in the next two chains 
starting in the second one, counted from our hook. One, two, and then we single crochet four in the last chain here. One and two, and then we turn it to crochet the other two from the other side, but in the same chain. So there's three and four. Now we single crochet one in the other side of the next base chain here. So I'll try to um, catch two loops here. So I go in there and single crochet one. And then we go in the other side of the next base chain and single crochet two. And now we have another single crochet to make in the same spot, but at the same time we change our color back to gray. So I'm preparing a little loop in gray. And then we make one more single crochet in the same spot. Oops. So we start with the white yarn, pick up the white yarn and pull it through there. And then we pull the loop in the new color on our hook and pull it through the two loops on our hook. And this yarn ends, I, I hold them both in place with my middle finger, no, actually the white one. We need to move on this side because we don't fasten off the white. We continue from now and we keep changing between white and gray. So we'll use both, both yarn ends. And there are different ways to do this. You can just let this, um, leave this white yarn end and just wrap the gray yarn around your finger. But I like to have both over my finger. So I both lay them over my index finger and I separate them with um, my index finger joint here. And then I just um, hold the yarn ends in place with my ring and pinky finger just um, to hold the tension. And that's how we continue with the next round. To keep it simple, we can forget about the white working yarn and for now, because we start joining the legs now and we don't need to carry the white yarn with us for that. So we just take one of the hind legs and imagine the belly looks like this from the side and this is going to be the back of the body, this is going to be the front. So the paw should obviously be facing to the front. So you take one of the hind legs and just hold it in place. And then you should be able to see where you should join the leg. So it should be somewhere on the inside of the leg. So I'll just insert my hook here. Later we'll see if that worked or not. If it looks weird then We'll have to redo it. This is the second time I'm recording this because the first time I joined here further toward the back and that didn't look so great. <laughs> so the, the paws were pointing outward this way. So sometimes it's just a bit trial and error. That's fine. So we single crochet one in here and then all around. So that's eight single crochet for the hind legs. When you get, uh, get to the last stitch of the leg, the, the stitch will probably loosen up when you crochet it. So make sure to pull it tight again afterwards. That was three, then four. 
for five, six, seven, and eight. Now we just need to make sure we get all the yarn ends on the inside here. We pull the white working end tight. And now we should carry the white yarn with us when we crochet. So we should crochet around it because otherwise, um, when we change colors and continue crocheting in white, then we may pull too hard and um, there may be too much tension and this will distort the shape of the body or maybe and there won't be enough tension and, and this may, would also wouldn't look too good because maybe the stitches will be too loose and um, it won't be really holding together well our little amigurumi so we will just uh, I'll just show you how to crochet around it if you're just making this cat in one color then you won't have to deal with any of this so we just single crochet one and we go underneath the white yarn then pick up the gray yarn pull it under through underneath the white yarn and pull it through the stitch so now we have two loops on our hook and now we pick up the gray yarn from above the white yarn and pull it through these two loops. And now we single crochet two more in the belly around the white yarn. So we go underneath the white yarn, pick up the gray, pull it through, go over the white yarn, pick up the gray, pull it through. Uh, by the way, now's the time to check how your leg looks. If the paw is facing forward, this is forward, then all is well. And this seems to be the case this time, so that's good. So we made two single crochet in the belly, now a third one. Underneath the white yarn, picking up the gray yarn, putting it through from underneath the white yarn, going over the white yarn, picking up the gray yarn, pulling it through the two loops. So now it's time to join the first foreleg. And so take the first foreleg and just have a look where you should join it so that the paw will be facing forward in the same direction as the hind leg. Now for the forelegs, we need to carry the white yarn with us because we'll be changing colors while crocheting around the four legs. So this makes it a little tricky, but you've got this. So you want to join the hind leg somewhere on the back of the leg, but more toward the inside. I think that sh should work best for it to, in order for it to point forward. So then we just hold the yarn in the same position as we did here for these three single crochet in the belly. And as we did there, we go under the white yarn, pick up the gray yarn, pull it through underneath the white one, pull it through the stitch, and then go over the white yarn, pick up the gray yarn, and pull it through the two loops. That's one single crochet done. Now we have three more to go so again crocheting around the white yarn that's three and four and now for the fifth we'll change to white so we insert our hook in the next stitch pick up the gray yarn from underneath the white, pull it through, and now we pick up the white yarn. 
through the great yarn tight. And now the last stitch, oh, now we need to switch colors first of all. So the white yarn goes on top now and the gray yarn underneath. So now we'll crochet around the gray yarn. And in the last stitch of the foreleg, we go underneath the gray yarn, pick up the white yarn, pull it through underneath the gray and through the stitch, then go over the gray yarn and pick up the white yarn and pull it through the two loops. Also, this was the last stitch of the leg, so I need to pull this in tight. And now we single crochet the next two stitches of the belly. So underneath the gray yarn, picking up the white, pulling it through from underneath the gray, and then go over the gray yarn, picking up the white. Then, oops, one single crochet in the next one here. And now we can join the next foreleg again at the back. I would start at the back, but more toward the inside. And the inside this time is the other side. So let's just see how that looks. I hope it will be fine. Just start joining it here. And here we're going to change back to gray in the first stitch. So we pick up the white yarn and pull it through the stitch. And then we pick up the gray yarn and pull it through the two loops. So now we have one stitch each in white for the legs. So the rest of the, the remaining five stitches of the foreleg we'll crochet in gray. So we'll crochet around the white yarn again. Now let's see if we attach the leg right. So now one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So in the next stitch of the belly, we make a single crochet. And now we should be able to tell how the foreleg looks. I think that's looking good. Yeah, I think we can keep it that way. Yay. <laughs> So we did one single crochet in the belly, so now we do two more. I 
and now we will single crochet around the last leg, the hind leg, and this time we don't need to carry the white yarn with us because we will rejoin it here and there's hardly any distance, so that won't affect the shape of the body. So for the hind leg, we want to join it again somewhere on the inside of the leg, pretty much exactly. So we'll see how that looks. And then we single crochet in all eight stitches of the hind leg. One, two, three, four, five, and six, two more, seven, and eight. And now in the last two stitches of the belly, And that's the round complete. That was the trickiest round. <laughs> so well done. I already love how this white tummy, look, tummy looks. <laughs> so. Now we can place a stitch marker here. And in the next round we'll have many decreases but at least everything is in one piece now so I think it will get easier from here. In the next round we start with a decrease so this stitch this first stitch of the leg here, that's the first stitch, so we go in the front loop of that one and in the next front loop and again we crochet around the white yarn in grey. Now we single crochet in the next five stitches One, two, three, four. Five, and now we decrease again so we crochet this last stitch of the leg together with the first stitch of the, of the belly so go, we go through the front loops only and that's that decrease done let me just check what's next. Now we single crochet in the next stitch. 
and then we decrease again so this last stitch of the belly together with the first stitch of the leg there we go now we single crochet in the next two stitches one and two and in the next one we change to white so we start the single crochet in gray and finish it in white switch these two colors around Then we single crochet one decrease Oh, actually we decrease two in a row so the next one is also a decrease so this is this um, last stitch of the belly in the front here and this tiny white stitch there first stitch of the leg and then in our next single crochet we change to back to gray so we start the single crochet in white and complete it in gray. Now we single crochet in the next three stitches in gray. So the rest of the round is all it's going to be all gray. and three there we go and then we have another decrease again Sometimes I find it helps pressing the stitches against my index finger to get through the front loops if the stitches are really tiny, like in a round as this one where the legs were joined and some of the stitches are just super small. Then we make one single crochet and decrease again. And single crochet in the next five stitches one two three four, and five, then we decrease once more And 
and then we single crochet in the last two stitches. One and two. And that's the round complete. Now our round has 30 stitches. And the next round is getting easier. <laughs> So in the next two rounds, we just single crochet in the next 11 stitches. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, and eleven. Then in the next single crochet, we change to white. So we finish the single crochet in white. Switch colors around and we single crochet three in white. One, two, three, and then we change back to gray. In the next single crochet, that's it. And then we single crochet the remaining 14 stitches in gray. One, two, three, Four, oh, that was right. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So that worked out nicely. That's good. Sometimes make sure that there's not enough ten, uh, not too much tension on your stitches because we're carrying the white yarn along most of the time, all of the time. If, if not, then we're carrying the gray yarn along. Just make sure that it's all nice and neat. In the next round, we repeat the exact same steps. So 11 single crochet in gray, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And in the next single crochet we change to white. Then we single crochet three. Actually, that's a spontaneous change, but I think let's single crochet four in this round. You don't have to, but I just think because it's shifting always with crochet, here would be a good place to make an additional white stitch. So in the next one, we change back to gray now. And now we should have 13 stitches to go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And 13. Now, before we continue with the next round, it's a good time to close these gaps here on the belly and where we attach the legs, where we crochet on the legs. So we left this long white yarn in here to close these gaps so just gonna thread this on my yarn needle and then just stitch through somewhere and then I'll just Close these three gaps there in the middle. I'll just, those three gaps, I'll just approach like, um, you know, fixing holes in socks. <laughs> it's just weaving through there somehow. And once that's done, we can Close these gaps between the legs and the belly. Uh, just try to get a hold of a like horizontal um, piece of yarn there because I'm doing this with white. I don't want it to be too obvious. You can, if you prefer, use those yarn ends, those gray ones that you have. But I like to just do it in one go this time, um, just to speed this process up because I'm sure. Not many people enjoy this part, <laughs> at least I don't. Let me know if I'm wrong, let me know if you like weaving in ends and fixing little things like these gaps. Mm. 
here I'll just make an additional stitch just so that it looks more natural this white stitch there now And the last one here. And now that's all closed. I think that really was much quicker than usual when I use this yarn in, so I'll keep that in mind. So then you can just weave in the yarn end a bit more if you want in case. That should be fine. And then all these yarn ends Can just be hidden away inside the body. Now in the next round we start with 10 single crochet that's two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And here we just leave the white yarn. We don't fasten it off because we'll need it later again for the neck. But for now, we continue with the gray yarn only. And here, we chain four, one, two, three, four, and we skip the next eight stitches because now we leave an opening for the neck and continue only with the back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here we should join this chain. Just make a single crochet here. Now I just want to check if it's as centered as it could be. So if this row of four chains looks um, nice and horizontal it can be a little bit off that's fine if it's a little bit pointing this way or this way that's fine but then it's all good this means the neck will be nicely centered in the front and if that's the case we can just continue if not then maybe you need to move this um, opening for the neck a bit forward by just making another single crochet here before you start with the four chains and then you would join in the next single crochet instead so that's just something to keep in mind and then 
we should have 12 single crochet remaining in this round. One I already crocheted. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. and 12. So now we just focus on closing the back for the next few rounds. And in the next one we start with one single crochet. Then we decrease Then we single crochet in the next two. Decrease again. Single crochet one. And decrease again. Now we just single crochet in the four chains, one in each, so that's one, two, whoops, there we go, three, and four. Then we decrease again. Single crochet one. Decrease. Single crochet two. Decrease. And single crochet in the remaining three stitches. One, two, and three. So we don't need to worry about filling the body just yet because we still have the neck opening there through which we can do that. In the next round, we start with a single crochet. Then we decrease. And single crochet one. And we re repeat this six times all together. So five more times. Decrease. And single crochet one. That's two, decrease, and single crochet one, that's three, and 
decrease and single crochet one that's four decrease and single crochet one that's five decrease and single crochet one that's six and now we just make a single crochet in the last stitch so now our round should have actually I don't need that anymore our round should have 14 stitches so in the next round we'll just decrease seven times one two three, four, five, two more. And as you can see, I'm squishing my amigurumi together to do this. Six. And seven. So now our round is reduced to seven stitches. So we can fasten off here and close it around. So now we just thread the yarn end on our yarn needle and insert our hook, uh, our needle in the front loop of each of the seven stitches. That's three, four, five, six, seven, then we pull tight and now we insert our needle in the center of the last round and stitch through through, uh, through to the neck opening that we have here and pull in that direction just to even out the back here so that it doesn't look weird or bumpy and it's looking good so then we can Go ahead and weave in this yarn in. With a few stitches. Just to secure this last round there. And then we can just hide the remaining yarn end inside the body and use it as filling. Now before we'll start filling the body and 
crochet the neck. I just want to do something fun. Please forgive me if you think this is ridiculous, <laughs> but I just want to embroider your little cat butt with the <laughs> pink embroidery floss. Just need a small piece. It's just a tribute to all the cats I had and to all those times they held their butt in my face. <laughs> so here is where I'll most likely attach the, the tail in the end. So I'll start here in the center. And this embroidery I'm doing with the sewing needle. So it's pointy and sharp. So we can go through the fibers to do any embroidery later for the face as well. I'll just make a little X shape. So I'll just stitch through to that side. So that's one side of the X. And then I'll stitch through back inside the body. Just some silly stuff. <laughs> so then we can Um, try as best as we can to make a knot inside the body there. Just by, you can just move the knot toward the back with your index finger and pull the pull both ends and that should be fine. Cat butt secured. <laughs> so this can go in here as well. There we go. And then we can start filling the body before we continue with the neck. There we go. We don't need to fill it too much because we'll keep the opening of the neck so we can always fill it more later. And it's definitely enough for now. So now we'll rejoin the gray yarn for the neck. So I'll just make a little loop with the gray yarn and have that ready here. And we'll join it here in the corner where we left the white yarn. In here in the stitch where we already crocheted in, that's where we rejoin. So I'll just pull that loop, oops. Pull this loop through here. And then We'll work with the white yarn again as well. Now we single crochet in the next stitch here. In gray, so we crochet around the white yarn. 
and pull this yarn in as tight as possible. Then in the next single crochet we change to white. So now we switch the colors. Then we single crochet four in white. One, two, three, four, then we change to gray. And single crochet one in the next stitch here. First we switch colors again, so gray is on top. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's right. Now the next four stitches we crochet out of the other side of the chains that we made here to separate the back from the neck. So the first one goes in here and try if possible try to catch two loops. And there will be gaps here where we start with the neck but we will close them later when we sew on the head, so don't worry about those now. Then we pick up the gray yarn, put it through and single crochet, so that's one of those done. And then three more. That's two. Go, cut two loops, that's three, and one more in here. And that's four. So now our round has 12 stitches all together. The next round we crochet the same way. So here there will be another little gap, but as with the other side, we'll close that later. So we single crochet here in the first stitch. Then we change color in the next stitch. Oops. Then we single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, four. Oops, too much. <laughs> Only four in the fifth one. In the next one, we change to gray. And then we single crochet in the next five stitches in gray. Two. Three, four, five. I was already attaching the head when I noticed that the last round of the neck shouldn't actually be um, so small. So 
<laughs> I changed my mind. So this is the second take for the last round of the neck. And we just do what we did before without any decreases. So we make one single crochet. Then in the next single crochet, we chain to white. Then we single crochet four, one, two, three, four, and change back to gray. Now we can leave the white yarn in here. We'll use that for sewing later on. And single crochet in the remaining one, two, three, four, five stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and now we just finish with the slip stitch just to even this edge here out so that it will be ready for when we attach the head for real this time. <laughs> so just leave the yarn and extra long here because this is the yarn and we'll use for attaching the head. And now you can add more fiber fill if necessary. So now we can get started with the head. And for this, I'm using white yarn. And we begin with a magic ring. We start with six single crochet in the magic ring. Then we close the magic ring, but not too tightly. Now, before we start round two, we'll prepare a little loop in gray because we'll join the gray yarn in round two. So round two starts with one single crochet. Oops. One single crochet, then we increase in the next stitch. So two single crochet in here. Then one single crochet in the next stitch. And now we increase again. And at the same time we change to gray in the second single crochet of the, of the increase. So one single crochet in the next. 
and another one the same stitch but this time we complete it in gray so just pop that on and put it through then we single crochet one And then we increase in the last stitch of the round. One and two. So now the round is complete. I'll just pull my loop out a bit so I don't lose it because now I want to close the magic ring properly. So I'll just pull it tight. And I'm going to start using my stitch marker now. Put it in the last stitch. So now in round three, we change back to white in the first single crochet. So start with gray and then switch to white. And from here on out, we need to start carrying the um, the other color yarn with us like we did before with the body. So now in the next stitch we single crochet one in white so crochet around the gray yarn And then in the next stitch, we increase. Then we single crochet in the next two stitches. One. And two. Now we increase in the next stitch and we change to gray in the second single crochet of the increase. So we start with one white stitch and in the same stitch we make another single crochet to increase but in this one we change to gray. So switch the colors then we single crochet in the next two in gray one and two and then we increase in the last stitch one and two Sometimes if the white yarn is showing through the gray stitches or vice versa, just pull the, the hidden yarn a little bit, not too tightly, but just a little bit and then it should hide inside the stitches so it shouldn't be visible on the outside. And even if it is, don't, don't worry. I mean just makes it look more natural if you ask me so 
now a round of nine has turned to 12 stitches and we'll keep increasing in the next round so we start with an increase two single crochet in here then we make another increase one in one single crochet in gray and another single crochet in the same stitch but we switch to white then we single crochet in the next five stitches one two three four five in the next single crochet we change back to gray oops starting with white finishing with the gray and in the last four stitches of the round we increase so one increase in each so one and two in here and one and two in here one and two and increase in the last stitch one and two now our round has 18 stitches and we keep increasing in round five we start with an increase then we single crochet in the next stitch increase again and single crochet in the next stitch oh we single crochet and change to white at the same time then we single crochet in the next five stitches being careful to crochet around the gray yarn two three four five and in the next single crochet we change back to gray now we're actually done with the white yarn but for the rest of the round i'll keep carrying it with me and crocheting it working it into my stitches because this way it's kind of like it's being secured and woven in in a way so we'll finish the round and then we can fasten off the white yarn so in the next stitch we increase and then we single crochet in the next and we repeat this three more times one increase and one single crochet one in increase and one single crochet one 
one increase. And one single crochet in the last stitch. So now we won't be needing the white yarn anymore. So we can cut that off here. Now our round has 24 stitches and in the next round we'll simply single crochet one in each. My round 6 of 24 single crochet is done now and we'll repeat the same for round 7. So just one single crochet in each of the 24 stitches. Once round 7 is complete we can go ahead and make our embroidery. So I'll just my yarn out so I won't lose my stitch and now I'll be starting with the nose and little mouth so for the nose and mouth embroidery we need our light pink embroidery floss I cut mine at about 35 centimeters long that should be um, I think around 14 inches that should be long enough and then we need our large eyed sewing needle because this is a more small and delicate embroidery I prefer using embroidery floss and my sewing needle because with this we can actually stitch through the fibers and this way we have way more control over where our stitches go so now we just need to keep in mind that this here is the top of the head. It may not be the end of the round for you though, that can vary. So just keep in mind this white part is the bottom side of the head. So that's where the neck will go. And then just have a think about where the nose would go. It's usually the pointiest part, so somewhere around here I'd say. And that's the lower side of the first round. So I'll just stitch through from the inside out, trying to stitch through the fibers for maximum control. Then I just leave the yarn end here long enough so that later we can tie everything together to secure it. And now I'll just make a little triangle. So first I'll make the outer edges just to define the size and everything and see if I'm happy with that. So I just stitch through to the inside of the head again and then back through the lowest point of the nose and then to the other side Then through to the lowest point again. Now I just work my way inward. So now I stitch through close to the outer stitch there. And then back through to the lowest point here where we started. Now on the other side, close to this outer, outer stitch, 
close next to it and make another stitch. So now I'm just trying to fill up this little triangle. And if it's difficult to get the needle through, you may need help, the help of some pliers. Those little pliers for jewelry making are great for this. Let's see if I can manage with that out. There we go. So let's see how many more stitches we need for this triangle. Stitch through to the bottom side again, this lowest point. I think maybe two more stitches to fill out this triangle. So two more or less centered stitches here. And one more, so again starting here, same spot. And wherever you need to fill out the triangle, that's where you can stitch through. And that should be enough for the nose. So you can leave it at that if you want to only embroider the nose. I'll also embroider a little mouth, but a very simple one. I'll just start at this lowest point of the nose again. And then I'll just make a little upside down V shape. So somewhere here maybe. And then I stitch back through the same spot here again. And make a little stitch on the other side. And that's it, I think I'll leave it at that. Here, of course, you can get creative and make it as big as you like. You can add more stitches. So I'll just keep it simple here. Now we can just tie these two ends together. And cut them a bit shorter. So that's our embroidery done. And now we can go ahead and attach the safety eyes. So let's see where those could go. I'm thinking quite close to the nose. I'll try this spot. 
I always widen the gap between the stitches a little bit with my scissors, but I'm very careful and just I don't damage the fibers or anything. And even if I change my mind later and insert the, the eye somewhere else, that will be fine. It won't look strange or anything. The gap will close again once I push the eye through another gap nearby. Let's see where the other one would go then. Maybe here. Maybe it's not necessary for your safety eyes, just these have quite um, these are quite thick and also I'm using cotton yarn and I crochet quite tightly so I always have to use this little trick. I think I'm happy with where the eyes are. You can also Take the body and see how it will look all together. And if you're happy with that, then you can go ahead and secure them. Let me just tell you first where I place them in case that's helpful to you. So that looks like it's in between round three and four. On this side, it's actually two and three. I think because the beginning of the round is on top, which is a bit odd. And then we have one, two, three, four, around four to five, four and a half stitches space in between the eyes. You can also measure from the nose, so there are um, no more than two rounds one to two rounds between the nose and the eyes. So they're quite close to the nose. So usually it's just a feeling. You can just see if you like it or not. And if not, then just experiment with it. So then we can secure the eyes. And now we can continue crocheting and we start decreasing now. So in the next round, we'll start with two single crochet. And then we decrease. And we repeat this six times all together. One, two, and decrease. So by the end of the round, we'll have a stitch count of 18. That's the round complete. And now we can start filling the head because we want to make sure that the face is nicely filled so that we have some fiber fill around those safety eyes. And we want it to go all the way and to the little nose area. So. Also, we can hide all these yarn ends inside now. Kind of use them as filling as well.
So the smaller you make the fiber fill, the easier it will be to control where it goes. So this goes in between the safety eyes. And this goes around to the side. And this on the other side. Now I just need a small amount on the top of the face. a little bit down here so we just want to make sure the face is nicely filled for now after the next round we can still add more fiber fill to the head to fill the whole head nicely and this bit can go here so in the next round we keep decreasing so this time we single crochet one and now I hold my middle finger this way to push the fiber fill inside the head just so we don't work it into our stitches and then the next stitches we crochet together so one single crochet and one decrease and we repeat this six times all together Now our round has 12 stitches and we only have one more round to go. So this is the last chance to add some more fiber fill. So make sure to fill the head nicely. If I use my usual, my, my non fancy hook, then I just use the other side of the hook to push the fiber fill in. So this may be enough. We can pause if we feel we still need to add more before finishing the round. So in this round we make six decreases. This can be a bit tricky, especially since you don't want to work the fiber fill in your stitches. So you can I just um, hold the head against my surface here and that helps a lot getting the hook in the front loops. I believe that was four. Let's see. Yeah. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, so we should finish with six stitches. So here we can fasten off. And now we just need to close this. We don't need a particularly yarn, uh, long yarn end because we'll use the long yarn ends of the neck to sew the head on. So this is just for closing the last round. And we close it by going through the front loops of all six stitches as we did with the back. Then pull tight and go through the center of the last round and stitch through somewhere where we have the same color to weave in the yarn in. So now I can pull tight just to even that surface out so we don't have any bumps there on the back of the head. And then we secure this by weaving in the yarn end. And then we just cut this short. And our little hat is almost done. We just need some ears for it now. So that's what we'll crochet next. For the ears, we need gray yarn, or whichever color you're using for your little cat. And we leave the tail and long enough to stitch on the ear later. We'll use both, um, both yarn ends to secure the ears. And we start with four chains. One, two, three, and four. Now in the second chain counted from our hook, we make one single crochet. In the next chain, we make one double crochet, sorry, half double crochet, one double crochet in the same chain, and another half double crochet in the same chain. In the next chain, we make a single crochet. And here we fasten off. Again, leaving this yarn in long enough, we won't need any stitches to secure the ears. And that's ear number one done. This is the same pattern for the ears that I used for my sitting cat pattern. And some of you said they turn out more round and pointy and as you can see mine look quite round as well. The trick is just that I squeeze them like this and I try to sew them on like this as well so that they are slightly bent and that they look a bit more pointy. So if you remember just repeat these steps for the second ear. If not go back to whichever minute I'm gonna put here to make the second ear.
Now all that's left to crochet is the tail. Just um, keep the tail and in the beginning long enough to stitch on the tail. This should be definitely enough. Then we chain 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we simply single crochet one in each chain, starting in the second counted from our hook here. So eleven single crochet, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So before you fasten off, you can have a look and see how it looks. Maybe you'd like it longer or shorter. So just have a look and see if it matches the, the size of the body. And if you're happy with it, you can fasten off here. Again, you won't need a super long yarn in here. And that's the tail done. So now it's time to assemble our little kitty. And we start with the ears. So now we need our pins so that we can first pin them in place to make sure they're in the position we want them to be. I'll just pin this one on here and this one here You can also use more pins to secure both sides of each ear and just look at it from all sides. And once you think you're happy with how it looks, you can start attaching the first ear. So I start with this working yarn end and I'll just stitch it through here just so that we have a neat corner here. And like I said, I bent the ear slightly. So I kind of attach them in a triangle shape. So that, as you can see here, the base chain of the ear is kind of in a triangle shape and that bends the ear nicely.
um, move this a tiny little bit up. There. And then I'll also pin down the other side. So now we just stitch through the head. If one of the pins is in the way now, you can remove it. Now this side is attached anyway. So then we stitch back through the ear. through the base chain there and then like I said I attach it in a um, at an angle I would say like a 90 degree angle so now I'm moving back more back along the head now I'm in the center of the ear so this will be the third the first, furthest I go back, so this part I'll attach here, stitch back through the ear again, and now I move forward along the head again, if that makes sense. So if this is in the way now, we can remove this pen as well because everything should be attached enough so it won't change position now. Now it's important that we stitch through this corner somewhere to make sure this corner goes exactly where we want it to be. And stitch through the head. And now I stitch back through the ear again. And if you're definitely happy with how it looks, then you can go ahead and weave in this yarn end now somewhere on the back of the head. Oops. other yarn end we'll weave in as well
And now we just repeat this with the other ear. So now we can attach the head. So start by pinning it in place. using as many pins as needed and then just look at it from all sides just to make sure that you're happy with the placement and once that's looking good we can start with the gray part so we thread the long gray yarn end on our hook just so that we start here in the beginning of the gray part, I just make one stitch through here so that we start where the gray part begins. And then we stitch through the beginning of the gray part of the head. Pull that nice and tightly. Then stitch through the neck again, just through the next crocheted stitch. And then through the head. And back through the neck through the head and just sometimes step back and have a look at have a look at it to see if it's all looking right. And through the neck again. And through the head. You may be able to get rid of the pins now. Now, once the gray part is attached, you can, if you want to attach it more firmly, work your way back through to the other side where we started from. So again, making one stitch through the neck and one through the head. maybe in different places this time. And 
once you feel the back of the head is firmly attached, you can use the same yarn end to close these little gaps that we have here and here where we joint the yarn to crochet the neck. Now I closed them already because I've been through the process before and then I changed my mind about the neck so I don't have any gaps anymore. And they weren't very noticeable to begin with so maybe you can't even see them and then if that's the case don't worry about it. Just weave in the yarn end to secure this. And once it's woven in, just cut it short. Now we can sew together the white part. So same thing here, we just go through the head and then through the neck. And if you want, you can again go back in the other direction. And then weave in the yarn end at the white part. All that's left to attach now is the tail. So we thread one yarn in on our needle and the direction in, in which it is pointing that's the that should be facing forward. So we will just attach it here centered on the back. Aligned with a little cat butt. <laughs> and just with a few stitches, it should be firmly attached.
So then we'll just weave in the other yarn end. And then it's all done. And our little cat is complete. My husband didn't recognize that this is a cat at first. And he said it was because the whiskers are missing. So if you feel the same, I'm going to show you how to attach whiskers. So I'm using this metallic sewing thread. If you have, happen to have something like this, great. If not, you could also use embroidery floss. Um, I also tried white embroidery floss and that worked well as well. Just like this glittery silver. So I'm using this, but um, you don't necessarily need it. You could use white embroidery floss as well or any other color if you see fit. So, um, taking the thread double and here I already did this once I just stitched through somewhere close to the nose and mouth through the fibers like we did with the embroidery and this way we have more control over where they go and also they don't um, they don't get out as easily. So then we just cut this through here because we want a double thread and also cut this two here off. We will shorten the whiskers later. So that's the second stitch I made. I'll make a third one and then I show you how to straighten them. We'll need a, a little bit of glue for that. One third stitch. So we'll actually glue them together and then we'll just have three whiskers on each side. Just want them to be thicker than this thread. So now I'll show you how to straighten them. So now we straighten the whiskers and then we cut them to the right length. So I have some super glue here. It doesn't need to be super super glue. I think any glue would work. That's just the one I have. And then we need a rubber glove just to protect our hands from the glue. So I'll just put a drop on my finger. And then I just start with this side and I start with two of the threads that I want to turn into one and straighten. So I'll just slide my finger along these two threads so that the glue gets everywhere. and then just leave it to dry 
And if you still have enough glue on your finger, you can repeat this with the other side. Also, if you don't have rubber gloves, you can just put a drop on a tissue or something. Oops, just be careful not to glue yourself to the cat. <laughs> So I just keep the other whiskers out of the way, but I'll need some more for this. If you have thicker gloves, it will be better, just to make sure it doesn't go through the rubber. And anyway, it doesn't have to be super glue. Any glue for crafting should be fine. And then we just repeat this. And on the other side, if you use embroidery floss, you only need one. Uh, one thread. You don't need to stick two together. I think that would be too thick. But you can use the same method just to straighten it um, and to kind of um, stiffen it because the, probably the embroidery thread will just droop downward. That would have. That's what happened when I tried it with embroidery floss. So I still have one whisker to go there. And then if necessary, you can repeat the process. This one is a little bit astray. <laughs>
Oops. Okay, so now we just let this dry. So once they're dry, you can cut them to the desired length. Better to leave them longer at first because <laughs> you don't want to repeat this whole process. And you can always cut them shorter later on. So I think I'll leave it at that. Hope this time Hobby approves. <laughs> so that's our little cat done, including whiskers. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for crocheting along with me. I appreciate you taking the time to use my pattern. I hope you enjoyed this little project. If you did, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of my future Omigurumi tutorials. Thanks so much. Bye.